Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, who has sent the true shepherd of his sheep, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. The devil loves to drive wedges in between those things that really in life belong together. Marriage is a meaningless thing in our culture where identity between a man and a woman is lost. Choice is out of control if truth and error no longer define life, only mere opinions of people. Humanity is falsely worshipped when injustice like starvation rejects how by nature we are sinful and naturally selfish. Issues are plentiful, but the devil's ultimate wedge, the whole purpose why he keeps kind of breaking those things apart and causing such separations, is to turn people against God and his goodness for life. And of course, we know God created the world, life, all that's in things and throughout all times and space. There's no wedge over how he cares for life. Whether it's the body or the soul, things that are temporal or eternal, visible or invisible. His provision pours out over life fully in far ways that we can't even know and the angels celebrate. God gives daily bread, as we know, to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people, as Martin Luther teaches in the small catechism. And yet life is also more than the material things we need day by day. Jesus refused to eat when tempted by the devil, stating, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Everyone has needs, both body and soul, spiritual and physical. Satisfaction is not in the wedges that we create today but in what the Lord gives. He has promised, I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely. And so you see, Jesus cares to gather his sheep, being able to turn desolation into celebration. And so celebration, we have to confess, is short-lived in the hands of sinners. Jesus saw the desolate needs of his disciples who had come back from a mission trip. Jesus sent them out, and they reported back to him everything that they did and said. Yet their success was less from their works. It wasn't from how hard they worked, but came more from the power of his word that sent them. Since works cannot save or justify the uh, in life, the to-do list only keeps getting what? Bigger and bigger. And even the apostles forgot about taking time to eat. Even the good ends up doing no good unless the church, unless God's people return to Christ who alone is the refuge of for weary saints, and you're weary, is what Jesus says today. Oh, you might have done things that were good for family, church, and state, but you're weary is why Jesus calls us back to him. And Jesus also saw the desolate spirit empty among the crowd, didn't he? When they got to the other side of the lake, an uninhabited place became full of people, not normal. And the apostles were probably overwhelmed by the sight of it all. But Jesus only saw sheep that were without what? A shepherd. They were wandering. Those coming from the towns were misled and unfed by their spiritual leaders and 
rulers of the world concerning both doctrine and life. They were lost. Spiritual junk food is what we can label a lot of things today. There's lots of marketing today. you got to be really careful. I mean, I know as a pastor you can go on and get lots of stuff. And if you're not careful, it tastes really good. But like junk food, is it good nutrients? Not much. Junk food is designed not for healthy bodies. And neither is spiritual junk food designed to help the soul in the end. It gives you a sugar buzz. But it's also short-lived, isn't it? And you crash. Jesus also saw the desolate place unable to provide for the bodies of those people. The situation, as time pressed on, became all the more evident, right? I mean, after a couple hours, my tummy starts to what? Get grumbly. It's just what happens. You can't stop it. And here's what happens. If Jesus was not going to say something about that grumbling, the disciples were, the apostles. And they said to Jesus, this is a desolate place. Duh. Okay, he was told me he was going to go there. But they said, this is a desolate place. The hour is late. Now send them away to go and buy food for themselves to eat. Rather than agreeing to the solution, Jesus turned up the heat. He asked them, you give them something to eat. He, he didn't, he didn't uh, back down. He just said to them, if you're hungry, then what? Go feed them. That's the problem. Resources, of course, seem pretty slim when you manage life. But turning to them does not help. It makes love grow cold and forget who is with us in the desolation. We do that all the time. I mean, we think about how much we're going to be getting income, we look at the bills, and then we say, I can't figure out how this is going to happen, and then we're getting so caught up with counting that we forget who is with this church, who is with you in your lives. Oh, you're going to count. That's <laughs> just part of life. You've got to count. But our big sin is we forget who is with us. And so celebration never ceases when Jesus gathers his sheep as the true shepherd. That's where it's at. It's not trying to solve the number problem because it's going to drive you bonkers. The disciples had a green pasture to be in the boat with Jesus. They didn't get to the other land on the other side and have green pastures there. But in that boat, for that, for, for that short time, they had what? They had some peace. Because who'd they have? They had Jesus with them. It was his word that gave it to them. His word said, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. It wasn't about the place. It was about the person who said to them, come away. Come with me. There might be needs of every kind when we step back into daily life. And there are. There's no doubt. But a holy rest for you this day comes from Jesus in his word. Rich with forgiveness, rich with life. God grant success by the gospel for us here at Zion. God grant that people might come and hear and receive. But the sure foundation to celebrate is life built upon Jesus, who has not failed his saints. He keeps doing what he does best. The good shepherd feeds his, what? His sheep. He doesn't stop. He loves to do it. The Lord is our righteousness. So success measured by God is already by baptism. To trust how you belong to Jesus. Now, there's only a kind of success. You can measure it by how big a diamond ring is, how big your budget, how long your life how smart you are, doesn't matter. Success to Jesus in the end is how he serves us 
and how you already promised is you are glorious because you've been baptized into his name. And he gave it to you if you were baptized as a baby. You didn't have squat, did you? And you still have squat, except for this. Your baptism now does save you. It keeps you safe in Jesus. And so the empty spirit of the crowd is also what we see has, has a green pasture of life from that word. That word that cares for us, that we get to have that, that rest, that, that rest with Jesus when we take it with his word. The crowd received it too. What Jesus saw moved him to compassion because he cared for their souls as the true shepherd of salvation. He taught much, which was a heavenly food that would not perish. You keep feeding people, go right ahead. But unless you teach and learn, you're going to always have people who what? Need stuff, who are hungry, who need education, who all this stuff for life. But when you teach them, especially with the gospel, then you have something that nothing in this life can take away. Because faith secures you in Christ and his word. This compassion of Christ now goes with his cross, promising doctrine and life. For you stand upon him. And this is how we stand upon Jesus. We stand upon that statement that he is the way, the truth, and the, the life. And so the cross pierces every single culture. Every single society that has people who are hungry. People who need to be taught. People who need to be helped. But the cross comes with the doctrine in life that only can deal with us in one way. And by one person, Jesus. Who knows far better things for the sheep. Because he is the true shepherd. Who cares. Not just for your body, but for what? Your eternal soul. No matter if you are far off or near, Christ misses no one, being the word of redemption who removes your fear and dismay against God. Because, of course, when you know things aren't going right, it's more than just getting mad at your spouse, more than getting frustrated at the government taxes, more than frustrations over why is this person healthy and lives a long life, but this person not so healthy and they die such a short life. No, our frustration is cured by the faithfulness of Jesus to trust and know God is good. Because in the end, God is faithful by giving us his son, the true shepherd who lays down his life for the what? For you, the sheep. The desolate place at last became a green pasture. Finally, the eyes got to see what the ears already heard. And God provided for the body. In forcing his disciples to count the meager amount they had, it made them have to look all the more to who? To Jesus. You get that? You know, they told Jesus, we don't, we don't have enough. It would take a whole year of, money, of, of a job to, to pay all this for one meal. And then Jesus said, tell me how much you have. And they, some, they come back and, they, and Jesus literally puts in their mouth even more shame. We only got five loaves of bread and what? Two fish. And of course, you know the story from the other texts of the Gospels. And it didn't come from some responsible adult. Who had it? A child whose mom remembered to pack his lunch that day. And it fed thousands of people by the grace of God. Beyond managing the need to eat, the reason for the Father's generosity flows out from his Son. I can promise you God's going to be generous, and he already is doing it, not because we're so Christian. God's going to be generous to everybody in the world, even people who reject Jesus, because God is so generous. And this generosity of God is so good, it goes out to the whole world because it comes through Jesus. This is why it's a complete and utter sadness when we reject Christ. Because when you reject the gospel, 
You're boxing out more than eternal salvation. You're boxing out and narrowing do down the generosity of who? Of God. And then you put all the weight of trying to figure it all out on who? You. Last time I checked, I am not so great. <laughs> and no am I, and I am certainly not no savior. God provides this miracle of goodness for the body, and the world counts on it daily, even if the world does not know the name of who? Jesus. This is why we get to share Jesus to the world. Because God is generous. And we know this in no better way, not merely by the bread we eat, but, 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 but who dares to consider this? The Lord's Supper. That's a meal, right? There's a little bit of food. But what God provides you to you in the Lord's Supper is his what? True body and blood given and shed for you. To take comfort, to count on that sacrament because God does care that much about your life. Not just about your body, but your very soul. Which money can never buy. Christ binds us to his love that never grows cold. And to count on him for generosity. Lots of wedges today, but we need what's good for both the body and the soul. And that's the problem. Because we keep talking a lot about the physical things and we forget about what? The spiritual things. And of course, you can end up like the medieval, medieval ages and ignore the physical things and talk about the what? The spiritual things. They belong together. Just like Jesus is both God and what? Man. God made plans for such a true shepherd who cherishes life in the fullest. Jesus cares to gather his sheep. May many be gathered by the promise of his word so that desolation can turn into places of celebration for both the body and most certainly for your souls. Amen. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding be with your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus to life everlasting in this good shepherd of the sheep. Amen.